Hey guys, this is Frank, and in this Armor 3 video of Optimizing Armor Episode 8, we're going to focus on the different types of AI we could spawn in our Armor 3 mission, and try to leverage the pros and cons of each type of AI. There are units, agents, vehicles, and local vehicles that we can create. Starting with units, they require a group to be created, and function properly. They also have certain commands that work on them that don't work on agents, such as do move, do fire, do target, because units are able to actually acquire targets, engage targets, delegate targets to teammates, communicate information about their targets to their teammates, even with the voice lines. Um, there are other commands that work on units, such as reveal, target knowledge, knows about. These commands do not work on agents. So, depending on what you need your AI for, you may want to use a unit for them. But like I said, they are heavier on performance because of all these, I guess, functional functionalities that these units have. Um, they have more pathfinding, they have to worry about each other, and there's more, I guess, global knowledge of information that's getting passed through them. There's a whole bunch of reasons. So let's go into agents. Actually, before I do that, there is one more thing that is nice about units. They're able to execute commands exactly when you tell them to. Sometimes you need to set their speaker as no voice to really achieve that, but for the most part, you tell an AI, a unit, to move somewhere, and you let's say you're spamming them with commands to move to the position of the player to keep updating that position, it will be accurate. Whereas with agents, that is not the case. Agents have a more of a delay when they when you want them to execute a command of any kind. Even setting a variable on a on an agent is not always up to date. At least the information about that uh, that object or whatever the hell you're putting as this variable. Whereas with units, you can update their variables more frequently on that object of the unit itself. So going into agents, I guess I should give you an example why you would want to use a unit. You'd want to use a unit for someone who wants to engage targets, usually, or have more frequent, accurate pathing, I guess. So those are some examples, like insurgents, soldiers, civilian drivers, maybe a suicide bomber, maybe sometimes even zombies you may want to use as units because they're able to be, you get, let's say you want them to be updated on a, another target's position, that's a good idea to use a unit. So with agents, on the other hand, there are pros to, even though they are less functional, let's say, they are better for performance. Some of the reasons why is that agents do not require groups, so they don't have to worry about formations, they don't have to, they also can't acquire targets, so they don't have to worry about delegating information about targets or any of that shit to each other either. So agents are actually objectively better for performance just because of those two things alone, on top of the fact that they don't really retain information accurately, I guess, or you can't update free information on them frequently. Part of the optimizations of, ag of agents, I think. I don't think it's a bug. Uh, I think it's just part of how they're optimized or whatever. But uh, normally you'd want to use agents for civilians, maybe zombies, and some other stuff. Suicide Bomber is not really, you can get away with it, but like I said, their positioning or uh, how how frequently you can update the position of where you want them to move to is not always accurate, so keep that in mind. Um, you may want to use a unit for those kinds of things, but otherwise agents are pretty squared away. As far as like an eight, let's say you want an AI that just animate either in an AO or on the base, but you want everyone to see them, you may want to use the command create vehicle. Create vehicle allows you to well, actually, before I go into create vehicle, let me actually explain one more thing about agents, just so you guys know how to use them. You do have to disable the AI FSM on agents, otherwise they will not move from point A to point B. If you do that, then they can move. Agents can also move just like units, but they require a different script command. You can either use move to, or you can use set destination. And set destination actually has a few good script commands or uh, values you can apply to that script command, such as leader planned, or leader direct. The difference is leader planned kind of is like a more high priority command for an agent to uh, execute, especially if you have a force replan on there. Additionally, there's another value you could set. Instead of leader plan, you could set leader direct, and the AI, or you know, the agent, will path directly from point A to point B, ignoring all collision, which can be bad because they can walk through buildings and rocks and shit like that, but if you uh, know how to do some certain checks, it might actually be good for performance set to do that every now and then. So yeah, there's that. 
Vehicles, create vehicle. Like I said, that's a great way to have a ambient AI just animating. You don't want them to run away or anything like that. They don't, you don't want them to move from point A to point B. You just want him like working on a helicopter or some shit like that. Then uh, maybe create vehicles the command you want to use because they don't have any AI whatsoever. They have they don't require a group, and those are really the two biggest things. So because they have no AI and they don't require a group, they just generally are better for performance. But uh, and I will also say that you will notice less and less stutter based on each of these types of AI that you spawn in your missions. So create unit, you will get a stutter. That is noticeable when you spawn several units in a mission at once. Same thing with agents. It's less noticeable, but there is a stutter. With create vehicle and create vehicle local, it's less noticeable. But there is virtually no stutter with create vehicle local. Not really going to go too much into create vehicle just because pretty much all the information applies to create vehicle local. But uh, aside from the fact that create unit, create agent, and create vehicle are global commands. Keep that in mind, meaning that everyone can see them. Whereas create vehicle local, obviously in the name, implies that it is a local command. So meaning whichever computer executes that command means that only that person will be able to see that local AI. So if I, let's say a player, let's say you have a trigger at the base and it's a local trigger. Let's say it's uh, this player has a trigger there that when he runs into the, into the base, it spawns some AI in the building using the create vehicle local command. That basically will only create AI for that player because it's a trigger on his computer that is activating and using that command to create vehicle local and only he will be able to see those AI even if he has a friend next to him looking in the same direction he will not you know the friend won't see the AI but the, the one player will so if you could figure out localities if you not if you're familiar with the join in progress and uh, locality basically then create vehicle local is a extremely good and I highly recommend it. I use it like crazy for ambience on my missions now, especially with the bases. Um, basically, to get better performance, there are vir there is virtually no stutter when spawning in a local vehicle um, because all I do use them for really is just for static animations. It is there to look pretty, you know, have a guy at the base laying in bed or sitting in a chair, shit like that. You know, nothing crazy. Um, sometimes you don't even need them to play an animation. Just put a guy in a tower, put a guy in a bunker as a local vehicle, and that's it. Adds, in, adds to ambience, has virtually no performance impact from what I've noticed, so... There you go, those are just some quick little tidbits of information. Let's actually do some tests here. I have 512 units placed in the editor right now. Oops, let's actually get rid of this. I have 512 units placed here. I could select them all and show you. 513 if you count me. Test the mission. Just show you the performance. We're going to try to gauge it. From 69, 75, 71. Uh, around 72. That's with 512 units in the editor. Let's replace them all with agents. For some reason, this test actually gives you worse performance. But, uh, I think it's just the way I'm doing my test, to be honest. But I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna create them all as uh, C Soldier VRF. This is the most optimized way to spawn in an AI because they have no equipment, no randomization whatsoever. I think their identity might be randomized, but other than that, um, all their gear is non-existent. So, it's one of the great benefits to them all. And I'm getting about, let's see, 4 FPS, 53, 51. There's actually definitely less FPS than with the units. I don't know why, but it is usually more than that. And then let's go straight into create vehicle local. This is where we really see that performance impact that I'm talking about. There it is, all right. Zoom out. We have 106 FPS now. Remember, I'm recording, so that also impacts performance, but uh, that's, well, what was that? Um, not, not double the, the performance, but it's damn near close. So, yeah. That's why I recommend using Create Vehicle Local. Even when I'm turning, look how smooth it is. At least on my screen, it's smooth. 
back into the editor. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Just the different types of AI. A couple brief tidbits of information about each one. Hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, great. Like it. If it wasn't, then uh, whatever. Rock out.